think I'm well, just going to sit in front of it. Wednesday afternoon at 2 p.m. This has been, in the last two months, this has been a real benefit to the community, and I hope and I pray that it continues to serve a need within our community in the months to come. As always, at the beginning of the month, can I remind you about the East Duke Food Bank collection? If you're able to donate something to that, then that would be much appreciated. I do understand how difficult it is in the current climate for people to be thinking of others, but if we're finding it difficult, then there are many others in our community who have struggled even more. And my last information is to say that Normal service will be resumed literally next Sunday when we will return to 9.45 a.m. for the service. So those of you who've been setting the alarms over the Christmas period for this time, now you're going to have to readjust, go back to whole plays and porridge, I think is the expression, from next week onwards. And we'll return to 9.45 a.m. services. You'll have heard from the news and um, the passing of Pope Benedict XVI and we should hold him and all those who love him in our thoughts and prayers. Our Catholic brethren will no doubt be mourning his loss uh, at this time. And also much closer to home, the death of a young man down at the harbour, we should hold him and his family in our thoughts and prayers. In times of emergency, send dreams of your angels. In the face of oppression, God save those who flee. Lord, fulfill your word in us through faith and with integrity. Give hope and give joy through the Christ, the refugee. Amen. So we're not quite finished with Christmas yet. We're now in the Christmas season, uh, coming towards Epiphany. Uh, so let us continue singing some carols with hymn 323, the first Noel the angel did say, 323.
just before uh, opening prayer. You'll notice that some of the prayers this morning, uh, and the hymns for that matter, have something of an ecological edge to them. And that is deliberate. As we have seen over the past few days, weeks, months, and years, our planet struggling with the impact we have on it. So this year, may we resolve to reduce our impact in whatever way we can and work towards a fairer sharing of the Earth's resources. Let us pray. Listen to Christ, who as an infant was carried to safety when your, your adopted father learned to value the hints of dreams. As we gather in worship and in our need, send to us such urgent and delightful visions as will set us on your way for the good of the earth and to your glory. Sustaining God, in this continuing season of Christmas, as we sing of your birth and hear how you share the vulnerability of being a child, we confess our half-heartedness, our imperviousness to the signs of our times, even to the unconquered sun and the growing brightness of each morning, which should lead us once more to set aside the works of darkness. Today the cycles of the seasons, which tell of your faithfulness, are gagged and stifled, and with them the human voices of those hurt first and lost by emergencies not just of climate, but the injustice on which our human societies continue to rely. For what the rich do to the poor, our species does to the earth as a whole, we acknowledge our part. And in knowing silence of these and more simple choices of today, food waste, plastic pollution, deforestation, air pollution, global warming from fossil fuels, melting ice caps, food and water insecurity, sustain God as in Christ. You enter with mercy, energy and compassion into the life of the earth, speaking out wherever creatures are out of place and lost. With the voice of the earth, call us to account. Show us the power of the heart and how we continue to misuse it. Forgive us, Lord, for all these things. May our praise join the chorus of all that has breath for the loud shout of challenge. For we are your people, your people forgiven, your people committed to the healing of the earth by God's grace alone. And now we join our voices together with believers around the world in the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. <coughs> yeah. I'm not sure that the microphone seems to be ma making a lot of crackling noises. <coughs> Can we try the other one? Oh, oh, is that possible? <coughs> Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, 
the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little more than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have made them rulers over the works of your hands. You have put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Amen. Following that thought on in my favourite hymns, I, I know it's the favourite of many, uh, and I believe it was the hymn that was sung by the Young Chorister of the Year winner of this year. Uh, hymn 154, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, 154.
We became the two gods. This year is yet unspoiled. Unspoiled by old mistakes, repeated mistakes. Our familiar ventures into the land of missed signals, misunderstood words and misheard messages. We long for a world where we get it right. And the old hearts are healed. And the way back is found again and we can breathe the open air of the Garden of Eden instead of the foul air of yesterday's failure. The first day of the new year. What shall we do with it? Unless we trust you to make it good indeed and new indeed. An unwritten story, an opportunity given from the richness of your unendless store of good days. So give us the time and space, we pray, to mend the broken bridges, to build again the fabric of a better world. Lord, have mercy on us. Give us, we pray, the root map we have lost that leads us home to you. Give us a song we have forgotten how to sing, the one, things, one thing that matters in the frenzy of the nations. Lord, give us blue skies and the promise of peace, the hope of the dawn that blots out the old darkness we have laboured in far too long. <coughs> give us a small thing to do that might make a difference here and there. Give us a large thing and earthly dreams to live by, that we might be a blessing to you. For Jesus' sake, we ask these things. Amen. Our Gospel reading this morning comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for him. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, and bring the good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, the Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see the thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby, who was lying in the manger. When they had seen them, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising, praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which is just as they had been told. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise the child, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he was conceived. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. So just as the angels did, let us come together in our prayers for peace. This morning it comes from an organisation called Connect US, a Christian blog site based in the United States. Let us pray. 
Lord Jesus, you came that the world might know the peace that you've experienced with the Father eternally. Yet, you taught us that in this life there will be wars and rumour of wars. Nations will rise against nations as violence works itself out in the world. However, through you, the world may be saved. O Lord, send your spirit into the hearts of all people, that the world might know true peace through your abundant mercy. Amen. So having just heard about the child in the manger, let us sing that very hymn. 314, Child in a Manger, 314. responsibility to our children, our children to give them a name they can live with. 
and not struggle to live up to. Jesus wore his name lightly. He was aware of the significance, but he was comfortable with the mantle of it. As we know later in the Gospels, Jesus attracted other titles, Messiah, Son of God, Son of Man, Emmanuel, just to name a few. And he was also known as the new Adam, Moses, the new David, all the great names of the Jewish past. The expectations on him were enormous. His early life was about defying expectations. Expectations that the world tried to place on him. When they wanted him to be vengeful, he was loving. When they wanted him to be all-powerful, he chose the path of humility and, consul and consolation. When they wanted him to be quiet, he spoke out. When they wanted him to conform, he refused to be tied down by dogma. Jesus was the chosen one, the one God had sent to save his people. But he would pay a price that the world could not imagine. During the wanderings of the Exodus, the 40 years in the desert, Moses had taken two goats, one to be sacrificed, the other to be cast out of the camp into the wilderness and carry the sins of all the people with it. This became what we call today the scapegoat, the one that would purge the people of all their faults and failings. Jesus took that role onto his own shoulders and he was sacrificed on the cross, taking away the sins of the world and purifying his people once and for all time. His name was important, not just because it was a name his parents gave him, but because he lived up to and beyond its significance for his Heavenly Father. Never has someone truly lived up to the name in the 2,000 years since then. Names matter. They tell us who we are. They tell us where we came from. They also tell us something about the expectations others might have of us. In modern societies, names are less important than they once were, but they still say something about us, about the hopes and expectations of each child's parents. Whatever the name we use for Jesus, he remains the greatest hope for all of us in a world that still desperately needs saving from itself. Amen. May God add his blessing to these words. Let us sing again from the hymn book, Angels from the Realms of Glory, 324. <laughs>
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come to you bearing gifts, not of gold or frankincense or myrrh, but the gift of our service, our faith and our resources to be put to your work in this place. Bless us, we pray, that we might be worthy of your love and care. And as you bless us, may we in turn be a blessing to you. Sustain God, may we be sustained in prayer, commitment, and in speaking out. In prayer we are one with the earth, the habitat, the home of such diversity, the ever-changing source of life in which you have given shape and purpose. Help us to tend the wounds of the world, attend the causes that aim to improve it, and stand up for the lies and twisted truths that claim both our that our response is fruitless or that the earth can be fixed so that we can breathe easy. In prayer we become one with the Church, Christ's family in every age, more varied of race, speech and language, of identity, body language and preoccupations than any single life could encompass. Help us be the Church in our place, in our time. By our welcome to all who follow Christ, and our dis discipline of justice and forgiveness. Heal the hearts, break the barriers, that in our day of crisis, church may truly be light to the world and light for our neighbours. Sustaining God, may we be sustained in prayer, commitment and in speaking out. In prayer we are open to your love, in the needs we are comfortable naming before others, and in the needs we cannot share in words. So let us keep silence and pray for those we know of in need of your care, your comfort, your compassion, and your love. Through our prayers, we let our needs be known. We share with the prayers of others. We remember the anniversaries, difficult decisions, thresholds of our friends and of our enemies. For including all, we pray with Christ, who loves and warms and heals. Sustaining God, may we be sustained in prayer, commitment, and in speaking out. Amen. <coughs> you will not be surprised that the closing hymn is about looking forward, not looking back. So let's look forward in faith in 237. <coughs>
times of emergency, send dreams of your angels. In the face of oppression, God save those who flee. Lord, fulfill your work in us through faith with integrity. Give hope and give joy through Christ the refugee. And may the blessing of the God of love and justice, of the homeless child who triumphs, of the wild wind who blows where it will, enliven and encourage you today and in all the days to come.